bit too much. Well, we should be good for the next few weeks. Call it a reset of sorts. What is up, familia? How are you all doing? I hope you are all doing better today than yesterday. Let's get right to it. So the initial wave of emotions has passed at this point and we have to make some adjustments. Like I mentioned before though, some slight adjustment in everything we do. We will discuss some points in this video that will obviously relate to the current situation we are all going through. Now, like I mentioned in the last video, please know I am not an epidemic. Wow, I messed that up. And epidemiology. And I did not study any type of medicine or type of science behind viruses and such. For that information, please go and check the CDC and WHO websites to get more information from the actual experts. Now, before we dive into this video, let us gain some inspiration from the gospel. For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given as a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. This is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So how serious? That is really a question a lot of people at this point still ask. Some people are actually incredulous to the situation at hand, and it begs to ask the question why this is still going on. Now, for the safety of all the people, some states have gone through with extreme measures and changed certain rules and regulations. And at the heart of my question with this point, is what happened to the days of when making a statement meant you were telling the truth and people trusted what you said was true what happened to those days now going deeper into this point there's something to discover in the words of christ and the bible through the church and while the situation may have left some people worried and anxious and others not believing the situation was that serious we should consider praying for both Camp. Now, I'm going to direct my attention to all my youth group leaders, group leaders, retreat leaders, lectors, ushers, basically everyone who helps out in the church in some way, form, or fashion. More than ever before, we need to step up to the plate and lead our families during this time. When we walk with Christ, you can say that we walk anchored in our faith of Christ. He is our anchor and he holds us in the midst of our difficult moments. So do not let go. Yeah, funny moment, but a funny story, but I, I gotta say the story, the story of Jesus in the boat, it comes to mind. And I'm thinking of all the disciples and how they're all losing their minds. And Jesus is there like in their midst and he's chilling, sleeping. And he's like, I'm tired, I'm sleeping. And it's like, he's like, nothing's going on, right? And so for me, this is like a reminder when he is there, we can ask him to help us. Staying connected during this time is going to be one of the hurdles we will need to overcome. And I'm not talking about the current news, but about staying connected to the faith. And I have to confess this point, and I think I'm not in the minority when I say this. I guess I can say that sometimes I took for granted how available the masses were made for me. The consistency of attending mass during the week and on Sundays became sort of my safe haven. And now that I have not attended mass since it was closed, um, well, it feels out of place and it just feels wrong. But if we can look at this moment in history and make orange juice out of oranges or lemon juice out of lemons or pineapple juice out of pineapple, oh, you get, but no, you get my point. I think this time of being away from the presence of Christ and being unable to receive him body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist, I think we can look at the situation and see how much we truly yearn for Christ. And so I challenge everyone to truly keep Christ close in their hearts. And this can be in a number of ways, which I will mention later in the video. Again, this is another reason why we need to lean on Christ even more. Well, if the mass is not there, then yeah, no, we shouldn't despair. We shouldn't just despair. There are things we can still do and should still do if we have done them before, if we have never done them before, and if we have sometimes done them in the past. Sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. I can even say technology can be a beautiful tool when used in the right manner. And in some of the ways we can continue to grow in the faith, even though we're not receiving Christ in your Eucharist, are well actually very simple. For example, in reference to technology, social media. Through live sessions and any of the apps, the opportunity to come close in community to pray together is actually made possible. If you are hesitant, 
Now I'm gonna I'm challenge you. If you are hesitant to start one, then speak with, with someone whom you feel comfortable with and bring up the idea of doing one. You never know. You can start a large prayer group or even start a, an amazing community where you can continue to share the faith. Also, a beautiful way to grow more in the faith is just taking time to read the Bible, people. Just read the gospel, read it. If there was any time when you were considering starting to read the Bible, it's, well, it's this one. Again, have it. And what about the rosary? Have you ever prayed the rosary? or the Divine Mercy Chaplet, or the Novena Prayer to the Sacred Heart, or basically one of the many prayers the church has to pray. I mean, we can take some time and really pray these prayers with true want and desire as we look to God to guide us during this time. And I think this one is actually a way of putting putting the faith into practice. What about a simple phone call to any extended family member or close family friend, just to keep in touch? Not only are we keeping in touch just for the sake of it, but you're also letting others know you are thinking about them and praying for them to be in a good place. There are so many more but these are a few you can do for now question of the week what are some of the ways you continue to stay connected to the faith during this difficult moment let me know in the comment sections down below i hope you all enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button down below if this video helped out in any way shape or form and consider subscribing to the channel to see more content like this also hit the bell icon to get notified when a new video drops during this time i will be doing something slightly different instead of doing my normal weekly shout outs i will be pointing you all to the youtube sites where you can go and see the mass during this time when we are unable to go to that and one of them is Kyrie films and second is spirit juice now make sure you go and check the youtube channels out for the masses and if you know any other youtube channels that will be showing the masses or streaming the masses please put them in the comment section down below and again i ask all of you to keep praying for all those directly impacted by this virus all the people working directly and indirectly to help out during this outbreak and for all of us that we continue to stay in the light of christ again please be smart stay safe keep washing your hands keep doing your part that's the biggest thing keep doing your part and we will put this behind us sooner rather than later and stay blessed god bless also i hope people i hope people are i hope people are a little bit more conscious of washing their hands like seriously like people need to seriously consider washing their hands not just now not just when this ends but continuously keep that habit because way too many people um they'll the i think they will continue to revert back down to their ways and this isn't the time to do that i think that grow the habit build the habit i'm not saying some of you are some of the people i i have seen some savagery let me just say that i have seen some stuff and you know people got to continue to wash their hands not just because what's going on right now but just because it's hygienic you know and just stay clean you know, I, I, I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know if everybody has thought about this yet, but think about your age and think about in the future where you will be when they ask you, when you're a lot older, and I think I might have re referenced this before last week, I, I got to check, but think about this when, when you're telling the younger generation of what happened in during this time like this is going to be one of those things that's going to be in the in the history books is going to be now think about the time when you get older well when you're older you're going to be telling the story and we're going to be talking about social distancing and and i'm pretty sure by then the the, the term social distancing is not even going to be a term and uh or it might be a, a usual term that people might use when you know, new viruses could pop up. I mean, I'm just thinking, like, in the future, how's that story going to be told? It's going to be interesting. I mean, we're going to have so much information to, like, let people know. But even then, I think we're still going to have so much more information in the future. So, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. Stay positive, though. Stay positive. That's the one key thing I'm going to tell everybody. Just stay positive if difficulties to come and arise. Man, in, in the midst of all these difficulties, in the midst of all of this, there are stories that come out and you start hearing about these things. Um, 
about some of the stories. And actually, some of these stories have been corroborated. So one of the stories that actually came out was of a priest that actually gave up his his ventilator. Um, and he gave it to a younger person. Um, even though he even though he knew he was uh, in a worse shape, if he would he would give up his ventilator. Um, I think his name was Don Giuseppe Ber Ber Berardelli. I think I'm, I'm, I might have messed up the last name, but yeah, man. And that that verse, I forgot where I read it, but they brought up that verse of laying down one's life for another one, and you know that was a that was a humongous sacrifice right there.